Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another tutorial for you. And we're at the stage where I want to be adding sandbags to this foam board build. Okay. Uh, and since we're adding sandbags, what I thought I'd do is I'd do not just show you just how to put a sandbag on, but I'll show you, you know, do, we'll do a proper tutorial on sandbags so you get a really good grasp of sandbags and that, that sort of thing. I know it sounds strange, but sandbags actually are, are two very different beasts. Okay. And let me explain this. Okay, there's two sorts of sandbags, yeah? You've got the sandbags that are used for prepared emplacements, okay? So such things like, uh, you know, artillery bunkers, entrenchments, you know, something that the engineers have built in advance of combat, you know, a defended position. And these are typical things of like where you look at them and they've got rows of uber neat sandbags making literally walls, okay? And then you've got the sort of sandbags which are more field driven. By this I mean is like in combat, yeah, you don't take pre-prepared sandbags. You don't carry those around. You carry a couple of Hessian sandbag sacks and you fill them with whatever's around you to, to, to help, you know, make your, your, your position a bit more defendable. You know, and how much time and planning and effort put you put into that really depends on how much time you've got before bullets start winging your way. So there's a big difference between the sort of prepared position sandbags and the ad hoc in the field ones, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do both. Right, now, let me move this aside. Now, these guys are, are here. I'll show you why they're here in a minute, but these are my Imperial Guard, and this is going to form part of my what you call Imperial Guard table, my city fight table. Get out! Yes. So, let me move this aside. Oh, what's that? I'll show you an... Right, one second. Ignore this for a second, let's talk. Right, let's talk about the long sandbags, okay? Now, they look uniform, they're very, what you call it, they look, they look, you know, regular. You know, it's very much like when you see a prepared emplacement, it's much like sandbag breeze blocks, okay? And to do that, what you call it, what I've got, what, what I sort of do is I come up with like a scale system. Now, what I've got here is a couple of lines. There's two lines here with a seven mil spacing. There's two lines here with a 10 mil spacing. And then there's lots of little lines here with 15 min mil spacings. And you know, I'm guessing that the smart view can roughly figure out what, where I'm going with this. And just so you can see a bit more clearly, here's the photo. Remember to put the photo on post. Okay, and as you can see, yeah, those two lines, yeah, and then lo me lots of little lines. Okay, and the reason for this, Okay, it's to standardize when I'm making my pre-prepared ones. Okay, now when it comes down to what to material you make your watch bullet, your sandbags out of, yeah, you got a couple of options, like with any sort of modeling. Yeah, you got DAS modeling putty. I spent ages trying to find mine, couldn't, so I had to buy some more. Yeah, you've got Millie Put, and this stuff is I'm not gonna use this because listen to this. That Millie Put has gone off, so I need to get some more. Yeah, and then you've got green stuff. And it's down to personal preference. Now, my preference is if I'm doing emplacements and stuff like that, and I'm doing a lot of sandbags, it's this stuff. Yeah. If I'm doing a few sandbags in sort of an ad hoc position or just around the edge of a bunker or something like that, I tend to use these. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. I just prefer they. I find they take the detail a little bit better than this. Okay, so but this is sort of a mass production, so you don't need the the uber detail on it on the the sort of in, prepared emplacements. But anyway, let's crack on it. So dust modeling putty. If you've never come across it, it's an air drying clay. Yeah, which basically means you roll it, and when it gets to what you call it exposed to air, yeah, it dries and hardens. And there's a little bit of shrinkage with it, but nothing major. Okay. It's dirt cheap. You get it from hobby shops. And I'll, I'll do it back to basics on clay and putties and all that sort of stuff at some point but basically all I'm going to do is break out yeah my first blob yeah and then I am going to seal this up because you have to keep this stuff airtight otherwise it starts cracking and drying and it's not good so right let me just do that yeah put that over there right so here we've got a dash modeling putty now some people prefer to wear gloves for this. Uh, you should wear gloves when you're working with Milliput because it's an irritant. Yeah, but generally I don't bother. Yeah, because any finger marks, anything like that, I tend to smooth out later. Yeah, and I just 
Uh, I just prefer working with my hands without wearing gloves. You know, I wear gloves if I've really got to. If I'm dealing with something that, you know, re I really don't want to be messing with, you know, without gloves. But if I don't have to, I, I won't. Okay. Now, roll a little sausage out. Little sausage. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this. I'm going to keep rolling it. Yeah. Until this watch cut, this little rod fits comfortably between my two 7mm lines. Yeah, and the reason for that is once it gets there, I know that it's the same as a circle. Yeah, I know it's exactly the same volume. So I can come back to this project a year later. Yeah, and be able to produce exactly the same sandbags. Okay, I can produce multiple prod uh, multiple watch clip sort of pieces over time and always make sure that my sandbags are the same because in, in prepared emplacements, they are the same. Yeah, so keep rolling this. And it's sort of, it's good there. It's a little bit thick there. It's good there. So just roll them in a little. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Just this little bit. I don't want to skip it forward. Sorry, guys. Perhaps I should tell you jokes while I do this. I can't tell you jokes. I'll get my, most of my jokes, I get my channel banned. <laughs> Like, what do you say? No, I'm not going to say that. Don't say that. I can't say, don't say that. Be afraid. Don't do it. Right, okay, so. Yeah. God, don't do this to me while I'm filming. Right, there you are. Right, so it's within the seven mils, and I'm happy. Okay, I can see the lines both sides. At this point, I transfer it up to my 10 mil line, and I put it slap bang in the middle. Okay, and then I press it down with my finger until it spreads and takes meets those two lines and because it's a set volume i know if i push it down so far that it meets those what you call it that it meets these two lines that are separated by 10 mil a centimeter i know that the height standard yeah so immediately yeah i've set a standard height for all my watch call it for all my uh sandbags yeah no matter when i do them in the future you know Perfect. I know they're all going to be exactly the same height because it's the same volume it's pushed out to the same measurement. Yeah. And obviously, guys, you know, it doesn't take a genius to work out what these lines are for. OK, basically 15 mil separation. So I can make sure I can get the bag's length exactly the same as well. Now. Uh, yeah. Brain freeze. Right. A couple of tools. Yeah, you can use a sharp knife for this. You can use a, a modeling tool. Yeah, damp cloth, obviously. Yeah, I've got some water by my side. And what I'm going to do is, in fact, it's not this tool I need. It's this one, okay? That flat edge there. Notice it's got a little bit of a bevel. I didn't notice that first when I was doing the, you know, some pieces and messed them up, yeah? But basically, yeah, what we're going to do is... We're going to come along and the normal process when you see people make sandbags is they cut them into separate pieces. Yeah, and that's fine if you're making separate sandbags. Yeah, but we're making an entrenched wall. OK, and so what we want to do is if you look at look, if you look at a sandbag wall and an emplaced wall, you will never see a gap in it. That's the point of using sandbags. That's why they use sandbags for flood defences. OK, I have spent many hours staring at stamp sandbag walls out of sheer boredom and i can tell you never once have i seen a gap in a sandbag wall yeah so you don't want gaps in your prepared emplacements okay if you can see through it it's wrong sandbags don't work like that they fall and they fit okay so with that impression what we're not we're going to do is we're not going to go all the way through we're going to make an impression of separation and what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to sort of hold it. Yeah. And we know that we're going to be cutting it off there. Yeah. So we're going to do one there. And literally, let me move my keyboard a bit. I'm coming in parallel with the table. Yeah. And I'm putting a notch in. And remember, I can't see what I'm doing here, guys. Yeah. But little notch. Little notch. Yeah. Little notch. Don't worry if it wiggles around a bit. I mean, sandbags, you know, a millimetre here ain't going to bother anyone. 
yeah, little notch, little notch. In fact, I'm probably going to cut it there. Should have rolled more bows. Yeah, and then I'm going to come to the other side and do exactly the same. And basically, I'm just making the. It's almost like when you look at bricks, I'm making the the ones that go vertically. Yeah. And once I've done that, yeah, as you can see, it's a little sausage. Okay. You could really do with being closer for this, couldn't you? Uh, let me think, how am I going to do this? Because I can't zoom in anymore. Okay. We're on an adventure so you can see what I'm doing. Right. If it skits forward, it's because this bit took too long. I'll see you in a sec, guys. Don't break. Right. There we are, guys. Okay, a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and as you can see, I've just put my little notches in at either side. Now, the next thing we're going to do is come along and do the, what you call it, obviously the tops. Okay. And all I'm doing is I'm just pressing in while my hand gets stuck to where my sellotape was before. And it do my head in. Because I'm messing this up now. Because I'm trying to talk whilst doing a tutorial and it ain't working. Oh, both so you can do it. Right, yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah. There we go. 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 And then spin it round so I can see what I'm doing. And on this side, all I'm do doing right now is joining the bottom lines to the top lines, the top indents that I've done. Right, let's cut this off so we've got a proper sandbag. So cut it off there. Yeah, and we're going to cut it off there. Now, obviously, because I've, I've pressed all the way through, we've got these silly corners that you get. So I'll just pick that up and just tuck those in. Yeah, and it literally is just a matter of picking it up, pulling them in from the side, and then up from the bottom, and that'll do it. Okay, now there's our row of sandbags. Okay, now clay shapers. Yeah, the other thing I want to do is very quickly come in and just make an extra impression just there because they do sort of tend, even in wall emplacements, they do sort of tend to sag down a bit. Yeah, spin it round, do the same on the other side. Okay, now I know you're going to say, but what, Mel, Mel, what about the seams? Give us a second, eh? Yeah, so there's my little row of sandbags. Yeah, the next thing I need to do is do another row. So I'm going to very quickly do that, yeah? So guys, that was a bit of an adventure, but here we go. Right, here's my second set. Okay, I've done exactly the same way. And what I can do is, get me wet my finger a little to sort of reactivate this. Yeah, and then just stick it on and make sure that light bricks, they sort of overlap each other. Yeah, and I'm just going to go down. And if I do that, yeah, you can start to see how it's forming. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to do on this. Yeah, and that is just with our clay shaper, define these holes a bit better, which is these little dips in here. Yeah, uh, push those in a bit more. I'm only going to do this on one side. Yeah, I can do it on both, obviously, but let's speed this up because I'm only showing you. Yeah, redefine that edge. Yes, there we are. Right, now, we're at a stage where, you know, the basic shape's done. There you go, there you go. Can you see that? I can't zoom it in anymore, guys. I really can't. Sorry. <laughs> My camera's focus doesn't go that close. So I'm going to have to get a better one. Right. But we come to the stage where we're texturing it. Now, you, you hear a lot of times when people say, all oh, right, to texture this, what you've got to do is you've got to get some webbing or something like this or fabric, yeah, and push it over. Now, the fact of the matter, at this scale, yeah, the, the meshing of Hessian, which is what the vast majority of sandbags are made up, and Hessian has the, the sort of 
the strongest texture, the grossest texture. Yeah, any other materials I've seen for sandbags are even sort of smoother than Hessian. But at this sort of scale, you wouldn't see that crisscross nature of Hessian. Okay, you just wouldn't. Yeah, so it's sort of unrealistic. So to texture it up, just get a cloth. Yeah, and randomly just tap on it. Now I've got it because this is what you call it, milliput. I've got a little few cracks that I want to smooth off quickly. Yeah, and then all I'm doing is I'm just pressing it in just to get a little bit of undulated texture. Okay, and then once that's done, the last thing I need to do is get my watch call it, my hobby knife, and we're doing a seam. Now, there's a tendency when you look at some sandbags that they've got these massive indents in them. Okay, and you know, they, they don't look like that. Yeah, at best what you'll do is you'll get something like a trouser seam. Yeah, and that's if it's stitched on the inside. If it's stitched on the outside, yeah, so the seam is on the outside, then that's when you get that lip around. And we'll cover that when we do what you call it, when we do the individual ones. But for mass production ones, yeah, all you want is a token theme. See, a token line. <laughs> okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a quick line across. I'm not going the whole way across. I'm leaving a gap. Yeah, so I'm not sort of crossing my midlines. Yeah, and the same along there, because when you paint it up, this will just dip in, and it will just take a little bit of wash, yeah, and it will look like a simple seam. So there we have it. There are our sandbags. Okay, I hope you I, I bring up. Yeah, I hope you like the look of them. Yeah, that's how to do sort of mast emplacements. And obviously you can have them curved and, you know, you can have them lining up with a bunker and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, uh, and that's how you do them. Yeah, remember guys, a couple of quick tips. Don't have banks in them. Don't have gaps in them. Yeah, there's no gaps in a sandbag emplacement. Yeah, avoid the major sausage roll ones. Yeah, sandbags when they're in emplacements, they're long and flat. Yeah, and this is because they've been pre prepared by engineers using special tools, special filling tools to make sure they're all filled with the same amount of sand. Okay, in the case of what you call it, in the case of sort of you know ad hoc ones, the ones that are done in the field. Yeah, you fill them with whatever you can get your hands on. I've filled them with rocks before now because <laughs> there was no dirt. Yeah, and sometimes you end up filling them with your bare hands, yeah? If you're entrenchment tools, boss, you know, you fill it. But anyway, that's the watch one. That's the basic emplacement walls. And it is just a simple process of using a template to, to make sure they're regulated, yeah? And then building it up. Oh, one quick thing. Yeah, this is greaseproof paper. The reason I'm using greaseproof paper is because... Uh, Das, green stuff, milliput, don't stick to it. Yeah, and then secondly, just so you can understand, yeah, the reason why I've gone for 10 millimeter spacing and 15 millimeter spacing, yeah, which is a bit large for 28 mil, to be perfectly honest, if we're talking about true scale, yeah, is because they perfectly match my Imperial Guard ones. Yeah, that's the size of the GW ones, so I know that. If I use these dimensions and I put them on my gaming bases and that sort of stuff, yeah, they're going to look right. They're going to look right in scale and right with any others that might be on my tanks or anything. It doesn't mean that you have to do them 10 millimeters wide and 15 millimeters long. Yeah, do whatever you want to do, but use this system to make sure they're uniform. But there you are, guys. That's a simple, that's the, the techniques. And obviously, it's just a process of carrying on. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to skip ahead and we're going to watch it get the green stuff out. Yeah, this green stuff here. Da -da, my little tub of green stuff. Yeah, and we're going to make some individual ones. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to show you how to do proper seams, how to mold them so they flow, do bullet holes, rips, and that sort of stuff. So that's the emplacement sandbags, the pre prepared ones. Those those lovely engineers go around, they do such beautiful work, such beautiful work, when someone's not shooting at them. <laughs> when someone's shooting at them, it's a whole different matter. But anyway, guys, let's move on to the individuals. Okay, guys, I've mixed up some green stuff, but before we get stuck into sort of individual ones, yeah, just a quick word on what you it, sandbags if you're using DAS modeling putty, yeah, this isn't sandbag related, it's putty related, yeah, but I noticed it after I finished filming. Now, if you notice, if you look at DAS, 
yeah it got it gets as it dries it get lots of fine cracks in it okay and it's just the way it dries this is the the way the putty works okay uh the longer it's been out of the packet before you use it yeah the worse the cracks are it's just the way it is but the the majority of the tiny cracks will just look like texture you won't even see them when they're painted yeah and if you've got any big ones all you need to do is just wet your finger yeah and just smooth them out it's very much like filler in this case that until it's completely set you can rehydrate it smooth it it'll go a bit like a paste and then that'll just fill in any cracks yeah and you can do it with a brush you could do it with a clay shaper if you wanted yeah generally i just do it with a finger yeah because like the majority of these cracks will just disappear yeah when i paint it but just a little tip for you guys Sorry, I didn't mention that in the other one. Anyway, let's get back to this. Now, I've mixed up some green stuff. Yeah, I shouldn't have to tell you how to do green stuff. Yeah, if you don't know how to mix green stuff, yeah, go learn about green stuff from, like, someone who really knows because, you know, my sculpting skills are pretty basic. Yeah, but, yeah, mixed up some green stuff. I've rolled it out to my 7 mil. I've flattened it out to my 10 mil. And then what I need to do is just pull it off my greaseproof paper. Okay, and where's the centre? There's the centre, so you can see. Put it on there, so... I can squeeze out a couple of sandbags out of it and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut them out as individuals yeah now I as a lubricant yeah because as you know when you're working with the green stuff you always need a good lubricant guys spit do, spit works but you have to keep applying it yeah I like I like spit but you have to keep applying it but what I tend to use is I have a little pink tub of Vaseline yeah now it's perfectly okay as a man to have a little pink tub of vaseline as long as you use your off bits to sculpt demon faces on it yeah and if you're just curious you look that's my very first attempt at sculpt, sculpting a face they will get better as i work my way around anyway yeah that's my vaseline tub so cut in and i'm doing my 15 mil sausages Do -do 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 -do. okay and Yes, I probably could have squeezed a third one out of here, but I'd rather, you know, get decent ones to show you than watch call it. And once again, I'm not wearing gloves. I'm going to go over and smooth off any finger marks. Now, I pick them up. Yeah, and obviously they've gone for like a sort of sweetie shape almost, you know, with the pointed corners. Yeah, so let's get rid of the pointed corners. Let's get rid of the flaps. Yeah, and get them into a, just a basic sandbag shape. Yeah. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to get those seams on. Now with these sandbags, with the these ones, what we did is we did an in internal stitch while we've got a fine seam line. Yeah, with these, what we're going to do is we're going to do an external stitch. Yeah, and these are typical of like the ones you get with the army, well, when I served. Yeah, so get my little tub of Vaseline. Yeah, yeah on the bottom of my clay shaper. I tend to put it on my thumb, a little bit of Vaseline on my thumb, just there, so I could just pick it up as I go. And what I'm going to do is, because the seam sticks out, yeah, now you've got the option, you could add green stuff onto it and make an artificial seam, but the easiest thing is just to create a line, yeah, like that. This is quite tough green stuff. And then come underneath it, yeah and create another line yeah and what that will do is it will make an artificial seam and it literally is just something like that okay and we go across the other way you can do this sort of stuff for bed rolls and all sorts of stuff you know all you're doing is you, you you're creating an illusion of what you call it an illusion that there's folds and that sort of stuff so line there yeah, and just bring that under a bit yeah then come out the other side and it's like a, a one mil spacing yeah and then if i just drag this over a bit so that the seam sticks out yeah and there you go can you see that i don't know if this is close enough or yeah but that's the process one seam then the other Okay, so very quickly just redefine that so you can see it a bit better. I don't want to do it too much because it will ruin the look of the actual sandbag. Yeah, and there you are. And don't worry about the sandbags moving around a bit. 
Okay, all you're trying to do is get that definition of those seams. So we'll come along here and very quickly we'll do the same again. Perhaps a different tool for this one. Let's see if I can get a better definition. Remember, unless you're doing like some perfect modeling diorama, these things don't have to be perfect. You know, they're, they're background pieces. Yeah, like that. And then, come on, just smooth out the bottom there. Yeah, okay. Now what I'll do is I'll enable autofocus so you can actually see this. Focus. I hope you can see this right. Can you see that? Let me get in the middle. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I don't know where I've pressed, but you can see that seam there. Okay, and the seam's on the side. Yeah, and that's the, just basically how you put a seam onto one of these, what do you call it? All right, let me get the autofocus going again. Right, yes, autofocus. Yes, we are good. We are good to go. Done there. We've zoomed in. We can't zoom in anymore. <laughs> Right, so that's basically putting the seams on the bags, okay? And obviously, when you're putting them on things, yeah, sandbags, when they're ad hoc prepared in the field, yeah, they're very rarely regular. They're not like the emplacement ones. Yeah, so, you know, they tend to have divots in, so clay shapers and just do a fold in this. Yeah, put a couple of dashes in just to change the texture so it's not like a brick yeah yeah that's looking good that's looking good just pull this back so I redefine that seam a bit better because it's not really sticking out yeah, and there we go yeah and it is as simple as that okay can you see that? I don't even know if the focus is on it. I'm sorry, guys, if you can't see that. I may re-record this one. We'll see how we go. Yeah. So there we have it. And it is literally just as simple as that. And, you know, sandbags are moldable. Yeah. So that's what you call it. That's the basics of just doing individual sandbags. Then you just simply put them where you want. And because the seams are in place, as you bend them, all the seams will bend with it. And then very finally, all you need to do is, once you've got it, like, you know, how you want it. So if we stack them like that, yeah, I'll push them down and just push them down from the top because that's where the sand would naturally fall, if you know what I mean. Yeah, go over with my clay shaper, get rid of my finger marks. I know I haven't done the seam on that one, but... There you have it. I have no idea if you can even see that, guys. Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Can we? I don't even know how I'm going to get closer. Right. Give me a second, guys. Hey, guys. Here we go. Right. Uh, I've switched to the iPhone now. I've got the iPhone directly in front of me between sort of like... I can't, I'm actually looking at this piece through my iPhone as I'm filming this. So I'm not sure how good it's going to be. But at least I get to show you a bit closer and a bit clearer. Right, I'm trying to not knock wires while I'm doing it. It's a whole new adventure, guys. Okay, right, so there we've got our seam. Yeah, on a piece. Yeah, it comes around there. Yeah, seam in there. And it is as simple as that, okay? A few score marks just to sort of texture it up. And we're sort of ad hoc, what you call it. They're never ad hoc sandbags. They're never completely filled, okay? Yeah, you just don't. Yeah, they've also always got dents in because, you know, you lay them down and what you want to do is you want to, like, you know, knocking an elbow sort of what shall it a lump a, a, a sort of divot for your owl, elbow so you know you're comfortable when you're getting in a firing position yeah so just add a few what you call it sort of marks and a bit of textures yeah and it is as simple as that to do sandbags okay now other couple of things is damage to them and doing damage on sandbags is really easy yeah really really easy now i'll show you here then i'll bring it up close to the camera so you can get a better view yeah, but all you're going to do is, yeah, you're going to make a hole and you're going to pick at it and you're going to pick it up. And you, the idea is that you're clawing it out. So you're trying to lift the fabric up. 
I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm sort of looking over the camera as I do this. Yeah, like that. Bring it round. I don't know what's stuck to me green stuff there. Yeah. And then very quickly in the centre, yeah, just replicate the watch with the stand texture by doing a couple of little spots and stuff like that. You know, and then coming on the outside and then with a clay shaper, just push in round the outside. Yeah, and what that'll do is it will define that what you call it that hole a bit better. Now, caveats here, I am not the best sculptor in the world. You've all known that, I've never not perfect at everything. And I probably get better over time, but there we go. Right, let me bring this up so you can see it. Yeah. Right, let me focus on it. There you go. That's better. Now you can see it. You can see the seam. Yeah. Obviously, there's a finger mark there where I've just held it. I'll go over that and smooth it off. Yeah. But you can see how I've gone in. And basically, just... I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this through the camera. Just picked out, what you call it, and lifted that edge up. Yeah. Dotted in the middle and then pressed around the sides. And it's the same for rips. Okay. Focus. Yeah, all you got to do for rips is pick where you want your rip. Yeah. And just literally work from there and just start pulling up the edge. Yeah, so that's the edge pulled up. Yeah, I need to pull it down here a bit as well, actually, because it'll be sagging, won't it? Yeah, yeah. Go in the middle, put lots of little dots to repl replicate the the sand, and you can add afterwards. You can add really fine sand and have it pouring out. You know, generally you don't get sand pouring out of sandbags. What'll happen is you'll get a rip. Some sand will fall out, and the rest is wedged in place. Yeah, and then very finely clay shaper. Just round the outside. Yeah. Just to define that edge. Let's put some marks in it. I know I haven't done the seams on this one. Sorry, guys. I just want to sort of show you. <laughs> I'm in a rush to go get the kids from school, to be truthful. Right, so let me bring this up and focus on it so you can see it. There you go. Yeah, and that's simple rips. Yeah, I could do with doing just get rid of that little bit there because that doesn't look realistic. Where is it? That bit there. Yeah. And there you go, guys. That's, you know, a simple rip. And then it'd be a simple matter of just, you know, putting this on terrain. OK, but that's how you do the seams with regards to the seams along the sides. You know, it's a pinch method, you know, go one way, go another way. And that'll give you a nice sort of sticky out the seam, seam stitch line. <laughs> yeah, same at the edges with the bullet holes. It's pick them open. Yeah. Press around the edges to define the edge. Yeah. And then just prickle on the inside to sort of get that sand texture. And like I say, afterwards, you know, just go over it with a bit of a clay shaper or a bit of Vaseline on your finger. Yeah, and get rid of the finger marks. Or, of course, you can wear gloves because, you know, you're much better at this sort of stuff than I am. Anyway, guys, yeah, I've got to do a load of these, transfer them over to the building. So let's go cameras up. Let's change camera. Woohoo! It's, it's multi-camera stuff. So, guys, yeah, that's basically an overview of what you, you know, how to do sort of pre-prepared sandbag walls and how to do ad hoc ones in the field ones. OK, yeah. So we've got those that are pre-prepared. Yeah, you see those. Yeah, that's good. And we got those. Yeah. Sorry about the little bits of iffy bits of filming. Yeah, we're still working out. I'll work on it. I will get it better, guys, you know, especially for this close up work. Yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll figure out how to use the iPhone better and film off that. But in the meantime, I hope you got this. Listen, if you do want me to re-record this or there's anything you think that you know I really can't understand what you're doing let me know in the comments and I'll get it sorted right that's sandbag so I've got a load of sandbags to add to this build oh yes just like these that will go 
probably they're not probably going to fit between the window. Is this why you lay them down? But you know they're going to go somewhere like that. Yeah, except you know they'll be pushed pushed flat so they don't have gaps in them like that. Yeah, and then what we'll end up with is sandbags on the top of the walls. So that's my next job. Yeah. Uh, and then there's rubble and all other things, yeah, but you'll see that coming soon. Hope you found all this stuff interesting and useful. Yeah, as always, yeah, any questions, throw them in the comments. Yeah, if you've got any other tips, experiences, anything you can add to this, any other train builders, you know, want to jump in, throw your tips down below, yeah. Let's make it a resource, yeah. So, you know, if you want to find out more, check the comments. Okay, right, uh, I've got quite a lot going on. I've got to go get the kids, yeah. There's something special coming up next week, yeah. A little video on that coming soon. But in the meantime, have a cracking day, guys. Yeah, thanks for sticking with me and thanks for forgiving my weaknesses because <laughs> there are men plenty. And remember, if you want a little pink tum of Vaseline, it's perfectly fine to have one as a man, but put demon faces on it. Catch you later, guys. All the best. Ta-da.